Uh, I've got a couple things before we start. I need to read this first. Uh, Smith County Board of Education has determined that meeting electronically is necessary to protect public health, safety, and welfare in light of the COVID-19 outbreak. And this determination will be placed in the minutes of this board meeting conducted electronically. And two, as we're going through these and we have a roll call, if everybody can roll call with the order that's in our agendas, it makes it easier to keep up with instead of trying to go around the room and find everybody's names. Especially for Miss Jean, that's kind of, she's trying to <clears throat> go back and forth. So you noticed that, huh? I noticed that, yes. <laughs> And make it a little easier on her. Okay, uh, we'll start off tonight as we usually do with a prayer request list. Need to remember uh, the Livingston family. Miss Donna Livingston, her sister, passed away. Miss Becky Hackett, as her father passed away. We need to remember the Brown family, and as their house burnt, it burnt completely to the ground. Need to remember uh, Amanda Taylor's father-in-law. Amanda Bridgewater had an aunt pass away. I need to remember Bonnie Stafford, and of course all of our students and staff that are out right now and hopefully be back, we'll know here in a little while, and all the residents that have been affected by COVID. Are there any others, anything anything we need to add to that list? My mother. Your mother? Mr. Scott Lewis's mother. And he, uh, Mr. Childers, is with his wife. Mr. Shoulders wise. Okay, if there are no others, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you thanking you for this beautiful summer day that you've given us, for the health you give us, for every blessing that we have this day in this country we live in. We're still truly blessed here. We want to be prayerful for it, for our country, prayerful for our community. Uh, Prayerful for our world right now. We have a pandemic running around. and it's, it's not just here, but it's everywhere. We just want to pray that that will soon go away and everybody can get back to their regular lives. And For those that have been affected by it, we want to pray for them. Pray for those that have lost loved ones due to it. And we want to pray for all the others that are mentioned on our list tonight. We know many in this community and others that's not on this list that we just want to pray for and pray that you'll give them strength or health or whatever they may need. We just want to thank you for everything again that you've given us, most of all your Son. It's in His name we pray. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. We'll start with our consent items tonight. Do we have a motion on our consent items? So moved. Mr. Lewis, do we have a second? Second. Mr. Apple, any discussion? If not, we'll vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Next, we have our superintendent actions. Hopefully, we'll have a chance to look at those. Move on to new business A. This is a policy amendment 6.304, student discrimination, harassment, bullying, cyberbullying, and intimidation. This is the first of two readings. We have a motion on new business A. So moved. Mr. Lewis, we have a second. Second. Mr. Manning, any discussion? If not, we'll vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. And I apologize. I'll look up. I'll try to look up and see if anybody's. I can't hear what they're. I think they're all muted, but I'll look and try to see if they've got anything to say. Link did not come through to Robin. New business B. This is a new policy 6.3041. Title IX and sexual harassment. This is also the first of two readings. We have a motion on new business B. Make a motion. Mr. Manning, do we have a second? Second. Is that Mr. Lewis? Any discussion? If not, we'll vote. All in favor say aye. 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 
Any opposed? Motion passes. Let's hold up just a second. Do we get? It's not that one. I'm sending it to all of them. I got three. That's I did that. That's what I sent all three. Hey Gina, it come through now. I got it. She's so. got it. Okay. Thank yeah. you, Robin. Okay. Yeah, she's still on the phone. Yeah, y'all go ahead. I can hear. I just can't see everybody. I think there's download. I think there's a Zoom update or something that's going to happen. So. Okay. There is. There is. We'll, They've been coming out like weekly. We'll go ahead, Dan, and as long as you can yeah, hear. Yeah, y'all are fine. I can hear. New Business C is a policy amendment 4.205 enrollment in college level classes. It's also the first of two readings. We have a motion on New Business C. So moved. Mr. Apple, do we have a second? Mr. Taylor, any discussion? If not, we'll vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. New Business D. This is Policy Amendment 6.319, Alternative Education. We have a motion, do we have a motion on New Business D? And this is also the first of two readings. So moved. Mr. Manning, do we have a second? Second. Mr. Lewis, any discussion? If not, we'll vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. New Business E is Policy Amendment 6.409, Reporting Child Abuse. This is the first of two readings. We have a motion on New Business E. Make a motion. Mr. Manning, do we have a second? Mr. Apple, any discussion? If not, we'll vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. I brought you no uh, friends. Okay. <laughs> New business L. This is the Smith County Student Disciplinary Hearing Authority. So we have a motion on new business L. Mr. Taylor, do we have a second? Second. Mr. Mann. Any discussion? If not, we'll vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. New business G. This is the approval of school fees at DES, FRS, GHS, NMS, and UHS. We have a motion on new business G. So moved. Mr. Shoulders, do we have a second? Second. Mr. Lewis, any discussion? The rest will have their is this, is this the first of two or is this the final one on this? No, this will be the final on this one. Can we, uh, can we talk about this at the next meeting? I'm, I'm okay with talking over Skype. I mean, I'm good with it, but I'd like to just talk about it again next meeting. Well, we're oh, just, there'll be some more school fees on here yeah, next what's week. Yeah, what's this past? You won't bring it back up. Yeah. Is uh, there like a particular school? What's that? You just want to go over the whole the whole list next meeting? Yes. Yeah, I'll come in and talk. Uh, you or director or somebody want to go over this a little bit more. But, uh, Marty, if, if this passes tonight, we can't go back over this. No, some will have to. Know, now, we, right. can, we can talk about the fees. We can put the vote out until the next meeting. Somebody will have to retract their, or Mr. Shoulders have to retract his motion. Mr. Lewis have to retract his second. Okay. 
I just feel like it's such a hardship right now on some people that we need to talk about some other idea on some of this thieves. Okay, I mean, if that's Mr. Shoulders wants to. Yeah, I can, I can rescind my motion. Okay, Mr. Shoulders, Mr. Lewis, yes. rescind yourself. Okay. Motion rescinded. I make a motion we table this next week. Second. Mr. Manning, we have a second. Mr. Lewis, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? This will be tabled to the next meeting. Thank you. New Business H. This is a quote approval for copy paper. Do we have a motion on New Business H? Yeah, somebody will have to make a motion to which one they want to go with. I want to make a motion that we go with the state bid. Mr. Manning, motion to go with the state bid. Which is the cheapest bid. Mr. Do we have a second? Second. Mr. Lewis, any discussion? If not, we'll roll call, Mr. Mann. Yes. 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 Miss Moore? Yes. I don't know what order I'm supposed to be in, so I'm sorry. Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Okay, sorry. Mr. Apple? Yes. Yes. Motion passes. New business I. This is a bid approval for janitorial supplies. Do we have a motion on new business I? So moved. Mr. Shoulders, do we have a second? Second. Mr. Taylor, any discussion? If not, again, this involves money. We'll roll call. Mr. Manning? Yes. Mr. Shoulders? Yes. Mr. McCaleb? Yes. Ms. Moore? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Apple? Yes. Yes. Motion passes. New business J. This is the approval of the Athletic Trainer Services Agreement between Star Physical Therapy and the Smith County Board of Education. We have a motion on new business J. So I'll move. I'll second. Mr. Lewis with a motion. Mr. Manning with a second. And discussion. Discussion. I was telling the director of schools, I was noticing the contract, looks like the money stayed the same. Looks like they prorated the money than what we originally agreed on. Uh, I didn't know if any of the other board members seen that in the contract or not. Uh, what we felt like by looking all the way down was just averaging. You know, it's the same amount they proposed. They had an escalating scale in the original draft, Mr. Manning. They didn't change the number. They just took the midpoint of that and put it for every year. True. So when we talked about this, there wasn't no escalating scale. When it was originally negotiated, there was no escalation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's correct. So, I mean, I'm fine with it. The rest of the board's fine with it. I just want to bring it up as a discussion. Here. There is, it's, it's, it's going to cost us a little more in year two and three, but now they just average it out where it's one, two, and three. There's that no board realize that. But Tommy say it started out at 24 on the year, and then they went up every two years now. What they've done, they've averaged it out over three years. Is that what you're saying? Correct. That's what they've done. In other words, what Tommy was asking, but it, it, it didn't it didn't come down any, it didn't go up any. They just took it, same total, and just averaged. It ends up being divided by three in the same amount. Well, I saw it, but I did not have a problem with it. They just basically did what you said. Was there anything else anybody called in it that was not we agreeable? We got the days changed. Like, sure. Days changed to 60 instead of 60 days. We got everything at that we asked to be changed in that was agreed upon. Except the money. Except the money. Okay. Any other discussion? Is everybody good with that? I mean, we'll vote here in a second, but. All right, this involves money. We'll roll call, Mr. Manning? Yes. Mr. Shoulders? Yes. Mr. Yes. McCaleb? Ms. Moore? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Apple? Yes. 
Yes. Motion passes. New business K. This is a Chromebooks purchase request from the technology department. We have a motion on new business K. So moved. Mr. Lewis. Second. Mr. Shoulders with a second. Any discussion? If there is no discussion. I'd like to interject so that you yes. have some orders and most, if not all, is the paid for on the grant. That was a question I, on the care I originally had. So, so that that's also I think we got about five hundred and forty six thousand dollars on this grant to help with this so and does this put us one to one or same as one to one? I've got that in her in my presentation. Okay. No, but okay. I'll talk about it now be a good time. We we are right now we think about two thousand. That's just Chromebooks now. That's not talking about when we're telling you guys for if you ask for one to one, we're that and above, but that's counting laptops, computers, stations, so on. Chromebooks were about, and then you know them better than me, about 2,000, okay? We got 1,200 more ordered right here. Part of that goes to update our teachers also because they're going to have to have an updated one if at some point we have to go virtual or for the children that are virtual. So uh, that's paid for, hopefully, and we won't have anything in that. So we got 1,200 more coming on top of 12 more coming besides the 2,000. Now, one thing, too, and I think this is important for the board to know. The survey showed that 78% of the people in the county has a device already, you know, mm -hmm. uh, home computer, a uh, laptop, uh, uh, something will run what we're, what we're needed to run. So, so we should be plenty we think we're that From that part, we think we're going to be in good shape. There's no more discussion. We'll roll call. Mr. Manning? Yes. Mr. Shoulders? Yes. Mr. McCaleb? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Apple? Yes. Yes. Motion passes. Moving on to new business L. This is the flash drive purchase request. Do we have a motion on new business L? I'll make motion. Mr. Manning, do I have a second? Second. Ms. Moore? Any discussion? I, had, I, had a, if, I don't know how, if this needs to be tabled. I brought them attention after we done got in the room, but they thought, well, Mr. Apple does something. He thought there might be someone we could buy these quite a bit cheaper, possibly. Yeah. And if we, is that a possibility that we could? Uh, are they 3.0s? 3.0s, 256. 256 gig, 3.0s, and they're less than $18? Yes, uh, it's through, uh, uh, I've got them through their reports through. Uh, uh, Here's the problem. Mm -hmm. Shit. Go. Oh. I think it's here. Me and Ace Tucker and Ambergy. I don't know. We could. They're our next order, then we can use those. Yeah. If we could save money, I think we need to look at it. Right. Because so we could table it or give us a chance to bid that or how would that need to work. Again, the three bid. First time? We we use what was on the state bid. No, we actually bid. We actually did a mini bid. Did a whole new mini bid, and they were the oh, it's right here. It's in. It's yeah, in the the if it's a bid, you can't. Well, you can reject them all. Sure. You can reject we still, all we do is. have that. We have that clause. We can reject any yeah. of them. Okay. Reject them all. And then come back and rebid it. If, if it's quite a bit of money savings, it's something about to look at. So. Yeah, I think it was. A, I think the total here was. Was a thousand times whatever the cost. Twenty four ninety three apiece. Oh, what are we looking at, David? Roughly, do you know what it would say? For a thousand now. Yeah. Right uh, four grand. Like I think it'd be worth doing if we do that. What people don't understand is the flash drives are like uh, anybody still people like lower receivers. They are. You got three companies that make them. Right. They're all in China. These, these stuff in there. Uh, you're, just, you're just cutting out the middle, mate. About two middle, mate. The same thing with hard drives and everything. You can get them a stick or you can get them a bowling board or you can get them a pen, however you want. Uh, they're pretty old. And they got them all over too. They're about. And they're not collapsible, are they? Uh, well, I look at it. They wouldn't have to go. It's folded up kind of. You can get a cap. Like, um, so one of the. Uh, okay. Safe. 
Mr. Manning? I will rescind my motion. Ms. Moore, do you want to rescind a second? Yes. yes. Okay. So we just push this, to, or do we have to make a There's motion? No to action. Okay. No action. No action. Well, well, question. Will we need these if we end up going virtual? Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So this do we good. need to put... You're going to need them. You're, if we get them cheaper, we need to give... Uh, what's, the, what's the lead time on the other one? The, the, what's the lead time on the other one? Lead? Yeah. Uh, you got them today, uh, July 23rd to the 26th. Okay. Well, the, we uh, need to, do we need to take some kind of action to give them authority to buy them? Because we won't wait to get them for another month. Yeah. That's the feature. But there's two different, three different styles. What if I if I made a motion that we can find them at the same price or cheaper? Well, if you bid them once, you've got to bid them again. You have to bid it out. You got to bid it again, uh, unless you go off the state bid. You know, but it's kind of like a the blanket mini bid, don't you, Danny? Into that. These, the, hold on. These, these, the the three point are one twenty eights. The two fifty sixes are two point oh's. That's why they're so much cheaper. The two point. Yeah. The the right here it says 2019 USB 3.0 hot 128 is the 3.0, and then the 256 USB the 256s are 2.0. That's how I'm reading it. I, I mean, read correct it. me. Yeah, I may read it. Right here, it says USB 3.0 128 3.0. Right, and the 256s were USB 2.0. That's what I'm reading up here. So if you select them, it would be 2.0. Okay. So there is a big yeah, like there is a, 20 times difference in yeah, speed. Uh -huh. Right. There you right. Yes. So in other words, this is a, a Model T and a Corvette we're dealing with. And we have to have speed to be able to let them to work properly. The 128 are 3.0, the 256 are 2.0. Okay. So, Mr. I'll Manning, make a, I'll make a motion that we approve this bid. Approve the bid. Right. Do we have a second? Who? Oh, Mr. Taylor. This is to approve the bid. Any more discussion? If not, we'll roll call, Mr. Manning. Yes. Mr. Shoulder. Yes. Mr. McCaleb. Yes. Ms. Moore. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Apple? Yes. Yes. Motion passes. All right, let's move on to our discussion A. This is our annual bullying and harassment for the school year 1920 end of year report. Mr. Smith, I'll turn it over to you. We had, we had nine cases that yielded an investigation that wanted enough to get, I guess, to hear. Five of the nine came back and was not seen as bullying. Four was, and uh, you know, it was different actions depending on what the level was, all the way from, you know, three days to, uh, I think that's on your report there, but, you know, some of these numbers are obviously skewed because we was out from March to May, and that's when a lot of your bullying occurs at the end of school and going on, but but that is good numbers for system this size. That we're, I think our training has paid off not only for our teaching and our administrators, it's paid off for our students. I think their understanding, got a better understanding, we do a much better job than we did two or a year ago or even even last year uh, but uh, that's that's what we're at if you got any questions on I'll be happy to, to answer them. Brian I got one. Yes Mr. McKay. Uh, we got one incident that was done on it was uh, 821 it's the very top of the report. The report was done on 822nd. Why is there such a lapse in time that there's a investigator followed up date was done in December when it was done in August? That's almost Mr. Taylor, that's, that's probably the follow up. Yes. It's well, ongoing. Who's, who's the follow up by? It's by the by the uh, building administrators. See, most of the time, depending on the situation, a student has put on certain protocols. And it yeah. might have been when the time was served, and so on and so on, maybe a probationary period, and, and so on. Okay. 
It just it just have to look at that particular incident. So how quick do you think the, the three day suspension, how, how quick did it follow the report and then the following? We could go back, happen? we could go back and look. It was probably the following, uh, as soon as they yielded enough uh, evidence to uh, place the student there. So it wasn't four months later? No, 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 not at all. I, I can get you the exact okay. dates if you want to call back, but it was probably okay. done as, as soon as that student was given fair and due process and investigation, it was probably served. Okay. Well, that's, I'm going to follow up with you, but I just thought you can't go four months and then, then uh, No, that's uh, probably when he came, that particular he or she came off probation. Okay. All right. I'll get with you then on that and private on, the, okay. on that. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, we'll move on to discussion B. This is the Smith County School Structure for Learning. And again, I'll turn it over to Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith, before we, uh, Brian, before we go to uh, Barry, um, I have a question that's something that I think we need to point out procedurally before we go on. Um, I asked Mr. Winkler, I know we are set for discussion tonight, but this is a discussion item on the agenda and not a uh, part of new business. So I would like Mr. Winkler to address what we need to do, how we need to do this for tonight. Well, if the issue is going to be related to the, the school board says the school count, the school board can amend the school count. And there's no issue with that. Um, the situation being that it is on for a discussion item, it wasn't a, an agenda item to vote on. So if, if there is a change in that, or if there's a vote for a change, you'd likely have to set a special meeting to take that vote. Now, there'd be nothing wrong with Mr. Smith and everyone having a general consensus of this board so that they can prepare. But if there, uh, Mr. Bell and I talked about it as well, if there's an actual vote to adjust something, which this board has every right to do and every ability to do, but you may have to uh, set a meeting to, to do that. Now, you could probably expedite notice in a reasonable manner and it wouldn't have to be terribly long, but if there's a new business that's going to require uh, some sort of vote, then uh, we're we're suspect that you can do that as a discussion, but that doesn't mean that it's not an issue that the board cannot take up on, because it certainly is. Thank you, Mr. Winkler. All right, Mr. Smith, you have the floor. We, I've got a lot of information. We've gathered a lot of information, and we've put thousands and thousands of man hours into this. The I guess the biggest thing tonight is to decide, you know, if you want to keep the same dates, if you don't, if you want to change those, talk about the, that to us it makes no difference. We work for the board and we're here every day anyway. We just need to make sure we understand what we can do and can't do. If you decide as a board to change the dates, we have to take that in front of the, a guy named Paul Rainwater for approval and, and probably, at that point, we would take it back. We would let our uh, calendar committee sit down with us. We've got, I don't have the exact date, we've got a time frame, we've got to get 185 days in, okay? 180 days, okay. I can't days. five because the teacher bit 180 two, days, 200 days. Contract. But we've got a time frame, and, and then you can flexible how you build that. I mean, some schools do go after, anyway, I, I was in a system one time that started after uh, uh, Labor Day, so that's feasible. When you do that, you know, you're going to change your file breaks, change your spring breaks, and change your numbers around. That's that's something that y'all want to discuss. We'll be happy to do that. The, the, uh, uh, it's pretty excited on what, you know, our survey gave us a lot of good information from the fact, you know, we've got approximately 3,200 students in Smith County, depending on the day. We had 2,899 responses. You know, that's, that's pretty awesome that our community got that involved in this. Our plan, regardless of when we go back, has been very team-oriented. And uh, I think I see two principals for sure here. Kim, you was involved in it. It was built from the ground up. So what, you know, I said, I don't want to sit here and flavor it. I want what you want. And that point, we'll start putting it together. But 
whenever. The only thing I would ask to the board is that there is a lot of time and effort went into this. Whenever we go back, we would like to keep doing what we do. If you'd allow us to do that, depending on what date you want to go back, okay? So I think that's your biggest discussion at this point. Uh, uh, I've, we've got a ton of data. You, uh, I'll go over even down to what we're doing, of course, cleaning the schools and bus, you know, how much you in depth you want to get. But uh, if you want to start with some questions, I'll be happy to field them. Yes, sir. I've got, I've got multiple. It's what? <clears throat> I have multiple. Okay. So good company. I've got uh, multiple information. Well, first off, I mean, this, you know, I'm, I'm disturbed by the whole circumstance. I know you are, too. And, and I think everybody is. And, and for me, you know, just for Scott, what, what I like to know, you know, when I'm entering into something, I, I kind of like to know where I'm standing before I walk through that door. So it, if we leave this like it is. Now you're saying leave the date like it is right now. Leave the date okay. like it is. Robin, Do we have, I'm sorry, I made it. Robin can't hear, so if, do you mind speaking up? I'm speaking as loud as I can. You don't take it back to Brian where she can hear more. I feel like I can hear him now. Don't you get COVID on the phone? Uh, uh. <laughs> oh. My, my, uh, to repeat myself, you know, we're, we're entering into a really precarious set of circumstances. And, and probably the most profound that I've seen. And, and I, I always like to know where I'm standing when I get ready to walk through the door. And if we maintain this capital date, do we even know? I, I mean, of course, you hear everything everywhere, you know, and of course, the board members, you try not to comment on this or that. Do, do we even know that we have the infrastructure to start on this date? Uh, uh, something's going on this phone, but I'm not going to touch it. Um, you know, do we know that we have the employees? to even open schools on the state that uh, you, you know before we even get that far into it i guess what i'm trying to say is before we accept this how many people do we have out how many people do we have down can can we even open for trooper school can we open to be the elementary school does that make sense yeah makes a lot of sense mr waker am i saying that uh, is there anything wrong with the way i'm asking that question no sir I mean, I just kind of want. Do we do we know where we're standing here before we? I don't. I don't. Through? I don't think, as far as that, it's any different than any other given year. You know, like we get ready to start, and say from Miranda Cook calls, say I've got five teachers down. We don't have reports to say we don't or we do. And we can find out real quick. But I would think if we that had been an issue now, I think you and I've talked before. That's that. I talked to Jane even with the hospital board. That is a. Regardless of when we start, it's going to be an issue with the lack of infrastructure. You know, I counted today, Scotty, out of just what upper level, we had about five administrators out of 30 that couldn't be there either due to quarantine. Because, uh, you know, I, I assume that'll run, you know, unless the numbers change, but we had about five out of 30 that was either quarantined or actually had, was under the process, had been tested and waiting for it to clear up and so on. So, you know, I, but that, regardless of when you start, what it is now that you're, you're, we're going to, and if we decide to go virtual, one thing I think we've got to do, we've got to get our people in to get a head count to see how many teachers we need. Because like you, like I discussed some of y'all before we started here, even if you've got 15 and they're all virtual, that's earning a teacher because that's still in the caseload. Does that make sense? Well, it, it does. But so basically what you're telling, the way I'm understanding, and if I'm, if I'm right, we won't know what, where we stand until we open the door. Well, we wouldn't on any normal year either, but I mean, we can do a survey, but there's no numbers that's got to us that said, hey, I've got five teachers out. Well, we I understand what up. you're saying, but I, I think this year is a little bit more catastrophic than, than but, well, what I'm saying is we've been in meetings all week with our principals that have been in contact with their staffs. They've not repeated to us and that they're in trouble with their staff, which they've had every opportunity to do that. Uh, I would hope so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they, I mean, we've been hours, a weeks of hours here and days, so, and they have not relayed to us that they didn't feel like they had any issues with that at this point. Now, 
we all know when you put everybody back together, regardless of when it is, you, I expect to see your numbers climb. And uh, the biggest thing here with this is the quarantine of it. I mean, the, the, the procedures of that is what's going to get us into trouble because I'm in a household with my wife. She obviously can't go teach the next day. My two boys in the school where they came in contact with, their teachers may not be able to teach the next day. Those are the unknowns that we don't know, you know. And, so, and to clear that up before everybody, because I know there's a lot of questions about perceive, what if this student gets it, what happens to the class, what if his teacher gets it, what, that will be released in the next couple of days on the website, correct? Yes, we got. Because there's a million questions that I've been asked, I know a lot of you have too that procedure will be released before we go into asking 15 different ways around those questions. We've, we've tried to, I don't like the word steal, and I don't know, we've asked to use it, but we not only have developed powers, but we took, you know, Wilson counties, uh, Nashville's, all the way to New York. We've integrated things that we thought was good whenever we start back that we feel like will be, we'll have to use. We're, one thing people's got to understand, this here is no different than it is anywhere else in the United States, or for that matter, across the world. We're in uncharted. There's no perfect plan, and there's not going to be. And either way we go, somebody's not going to be happy with it. I mean, it's just, we did But I will say this, I was very proud of our staff, and I think, Gina, you could attest, they, they didn't take the easiest way. They took what they thought was best for their school and their child, and I really believe that. I've got a second question. Is there, and I guess I can, uh, Mr. Chairman, with your permission, I guess I can redirect this one to Mr. Winkler, if that's all right. Yes. Uh, board says policy, correct? That's, yes. That's our role. Yes. Under, under the given circumstances, uh, can we set a policy asking for our employees to be tested? I would, I would think not. Probably not. No, sir. You're just talking a mandatory test employee wide. Well, and, and there's, here's the reason for my asking because I know that some classes of employees remain at one structure all day, but then certain classes of employees might be at every structure all day long, and and so the threat of spreading, you know, crosses my mind with that. Uh, so that's the reason for my question. Yes, so, and it, and it's extraordinarily valid. I, I don't believe we'd be able to get that through. I just don't think we can adopt a policy for a, a mandatory test. It's still a, I don't, I'm, not a, I'm not a doctor, but it's still a medical procedure. No, I understand. And I don't think that, uh, I, I don't think we can do that. Well, I, I understand, and, I, and, I, and Mr. Winker, I, you know I appreciate everything I'll do. I'm not trying to ask a difficult question. What I'm trying to resolve in my mind is where we stand, how we're gonna navigate through this when we've got multiple employees moving from building to building. You know, do yes. we know? Do we know? Are we looking at this? We're looking at this. And, you know, and, and it's a we're going to have to make a decision. Yes. And, and and it probably needs to be the, the most well informed decision that, that we've made since I've been on this board. Yes. Uh, because it, it, and I'm just going to say this for my part, we're not just talking about education. We're talking about life. And you're talking about what affects your school, the, the, the infrastructure of the hospital. Absolutely. But two things I'd like to say right here. One, I, I hadn't been around anybody that I knew, whatever, but I thought it, that, that I ought to set an example and get tested. And we and I said that in our meetings. I know several of our principals. Both y'all, I'll just ask you, both y'all been tested? You don't care me putting you on the spot. I haven't yet, but I've got it. But I've gone my to thing, school but that's not the same as mandated on us. But I think most of our ministers and they're, passing that on to their faculty, asking them to, because we had kind of asked that too. We didn't figure it could be mandated. We didn't know after talking, but, but uh, and second thing, not, if, not telling anybody needs to, but Dr. Duke, are you with us? Yes, I, yes I'm if, with If that's something anybody wants to direct to him or Kim, I'm not sure you want to ask her come tonight. Well, I have a question for Dr. Duke. We're talking about getting tested, Dr. Duke. Listen, if, if I went today and got COVID tested, and I wait for my results, and let's say I'm negative. That don't mean I'm negative forever. I could pick it back up in four or five days again. Is that not true? 
and you are correct. You can pick it up on your way back home from being tested that time. <clears throat> uh, the, the test is just specifically for the time that day that you get tested. It, it doesn't, uh, you can, on your way home, you can catch it if you got it, uh, you know, with somebody that was positive, then you, you can catch it. And then my next question is for Mr. Winkler. Of course, I hope everybody realizes, especially people sitting home watching this, this is a, a big decision, and I am really, really mixed about this. Part of me is wanting to start school, let's get on back, let's get going, let's go on through this thing. But at the same time, part of me is like, man, I don't want some, our teachers and faculties and staff to get sick. I don't want a, a child to get sick. I don't want somebody to take this back home to grandma or grandpa, or little baby brother, or little baby sister. I don't want that to happen. And, 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 and the worst thing is somebody could die. You know? And I don't want that either. Now, the question for you, Mr. Winkler, is is the Board of Education liable for any of this? Let's say we started school and we had an outbreak. Yes, and it's children. Let's not, or, or, not talk about our family. Let's say you know, they, they've got insurance through it. Who would be liable for some of these hospital bills? I don't necessarily think you're looking at a, at a liability question. There's some, okay. presently some legislation to try and insulate that, but it would be all but impossible, and Dr. Duke can speak to that too, it would be all but impossible to, to determine where it originated. Uh, I don't think they can do any more of the contact tracing as to where it originated. So I, I don't know that that would be a, a huge concern simply because of a, a proof matter. That's not to minimize the fact that you know, people could be sick. I'm not saying that, but from a liability standpoint, I, we I don't necessarily see that. No, Let's sorry. help others. And then and the same fact of this, I know there's parents out there that work and they depend on the school to watch after the children because, you know, they have to have, and at the same time, if we go 100% virtual, you know, now, does one of them have to lose their job? To it's stay got an with, problem with, 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 the, with, the, with the child. Or at the same time, I also feel that virtual learning is okay, but times you've got to have that interactive with that teacher because if my kids depended on me a lot of times for some answers, they would kind of be up the creek here because I, I wouldn't know and, and I feel like some of the other parents wouldn't know. What so I'm so mixed on this, I, 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 I don't know which is the best answer for this. And the next, Next thing, you know, it kind of leaves me like, well, maybe we go virtual for a little while, and then we face it in. And then I'm like, well, maybe we have an A and B schedule. Maybe these kids go on this day, these kids don't go on this day, and we virtual learn. I, I don't know the answer to this. I, don't, I, 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 I do know this, and Dr. Duke might back me up here. Once we start school back, and you get 3,000 kids back going, or you get half of the kids back going, and you get faculties and stuff going, there's going to be some flyer up COVID cases going to be. It's going to, it's going to happen. Yeah. You know, my work, we started back, we're back full, we've got some, you know, maybe not totally COVID cases, but you've been around somebody, so you quarantined. So I, I, I'm so mixed about this, and I'm going to ask you a question, Mr. Smith. Uh, what do, you've been in contact with the, the principals and some of the faculty and staff, so what do they recommend, what do y'all recommend? What are y'all recommending to the board today? Well, our first day, and like I said, there was three that was not up here that was in that meeting, and so if I'm wrong on it, it's correct. But, you know, we tried to hash, we sat there that morning for hours, and the first thing we said before we go any further, we need to decide as a group, do we need to start late, do we need to start early, and I'll be perfectly honest with you, I've been the whole time starting after Labor Day personally, okay? And, and then, and I, when we left for a break, I would have told you the consensus. Shane, you even said out loud, I'm, I, I know you don't care picking on you. You said, I'm for going after, after Labor Day. Am I correct? Correct. We come back, talked about it, we listened to Dr. Duke, and that's when I was so informed, happy that they tried to change her. They weren't saying, you know what I mean? Oh, they listened to Dr. Duke, they come back, and they voted eight to one to start on time with this splendid schedule. But, Again, I think we've got a great group of principals and administrators. If you guys want us to start, that, that's a decision. We're not putting it on you. We want to work with you because we all got to work together, obviously. We work for you. If you want us to go after Labor Day, we'll make it work. If you want us to start, we've got, I think, what we've got, or body of work, is fantastic of what we want to do. 
Well, let me ask you another question. Let's say we did start and we did either you go register to go virtual or you're allowed to send your student to class. And let's talk about our faculty and staff for a minute. Uh, you know, if, if one of them kids pops in there with COVID or a teacher pops in there with COVID, then we got another can of worms on that. And I'm sure you're going to address that later. Is there any way that we could have half our, half of our faculty and staff home virtually, not not be intermixed with the other half, just in case, say you and I are well, be teachers and you get sick, then I could jump in your yeah, spot. We feel safe with our faculty and staff. I mean, the, the, with the procedures we put in place, they they shouldn't be no spread there as far as within the staff. I, I, I mean, not saying it won't be, but. There shouldn't be, and you'll see the different safety precautions. It's, and I know you deal what you deal with at work. It's off the chart. That don't bother me as an overall body of numbers. You know when you start getting them together, yeah. and 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 we'll talk a little bit about the plan that was developed in a few minutes, and maybe it could feel a little more comfortable about that. Okay. And I might be putting the cart before the horse. If we do decide to go back, who sets the guidelines for the school? It ain't going to be the schools. That the guide, to be the board. Well, the guidelines, the guidelines we will bring to you, we've done got them set that we can't see. Well, this. Scope, as far as the guidelines for safety, is that what you're saying? I'm talking about where I work. We get a temperature took every day. It's 100.4. Four. Is it 104.4 yep. at four, Morrisville Elementary, Morrisville High School, Smith County High School, or is it 99 here? We don't need to have it. Whatever it is, it's across the board. Because I don't want this school sending a kid home. When this school here is going to get going. Yeah, those things are in a thing that's pre developed for you guys to look at once we bet. And, and we always let Jamie and Mr. Winkler proofread to make sure we not bet. Those have been pulled from numerous systems, including the CDC. Kim's been a very. And all our guidelines will be the same. They'll be the, the same as from defeated to New Middleton. But I don't think we ought to put that on our, our no, principles. No, that, that's, that's got to be for us. We've got to develop that, and it's got to be board approved so that, that it gives them some structure and for me to back them. If not, you know, Shane can't send one home at 103, and you send them home at 98.2, you know what I mean? That's going to cause a problem. Yeah. And I, just a few Mary, questions. if I can interrupt just a second, and uh, I asked Dr. Duke to join us tonight. I spoke to him last night. He was kind enough to take my call, and uh, we talked a better part of an hour. Um, and I would like to either give him an opportunity to speak or I can ask him questions, but he, the information he shared with me was really helpful and I appreciated his time. He's dedicated a whole lot of um, uncompensated hours to our county following this from the beginning and he's very, very knowledgeable and certainly knows what's going on. And I think it would, if board members haven't talked to him, I think it would really help them to understand some of his thoughts on this and to understand what we can do to better protect our teachers or kids and understand a little bit about the science of how the virus transfers between people with the extent of what we know uh, and also you know as other school systems across the world have reopened what has happened and I think it would be worth letting him have the floor if, if you all don't mind just to, to address some of the concerns that have already come up. Robin, I'd like to say also, Mr. Lewis had been telling me for weeks about this, how sharp this Mr. Duke was, and kept going on and on, and then we were fortunate enough to get him on a conference call, and I think he really, really enlightened our staff, and he's a brilliant man, and we're very, very lucky to have that resource uh, available, and, and I'm like you, I, and my wife, I hope she's not wearing him out, because I'm sending her questions with him quite often, and he's been answering some for me, and, I know that Scotty and you've been talking to him, and 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 I. If you don't know him, he's very easy to talk to up there, and he'll answer anything that you have. I think, and uh, I, we're very lucky to have him. Right here's a resource. Let's have, let, yeah, let's, Mr. Doctor, do, do you care to to give us kind of what your feeling is, kind of an overview of what's going on, maybe? Gina, sure, sure, be happy to. Um, I, I, I'm. We'll say, I'll start out probably, uh, when I had the uh, meeting with the principals and, and uh, Mr. Smith, uh, I guess it's been about a week ago, we were on, we talked for a long period of time, 
and we were talking about whether to start it sooner or later. And my advice was to start it sooner. And this is the reason why. And, and it, it deals with a lot of epidemiology and, and density of, 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 uh, of the cases that we have at this point. <clears throat> but at this point in time, our numbers in the, in the county are just going up exponentially. And not, not quite exponentially, it's still linear, but it's, it's getting close to exponentially. We're, get, we're averaging about 7.5, over the last 14 days, we're averaging 7.5 new cases a day. And that, that tells you how the spread is. <clears throat> and that's Steve, the, can you explain, I don't mean to interrupt, but can you explain to them, like you've explained to me, the difference between linear and exponential spread? Sure, sure, absolutely. Le linear spread, if you, if, you, if you go back to your high school or college math, linear Linear progression or linear growth is, is a straight line growth that just grows straight up. <clears throat> One person gives it to another person, that person gives it to another person, and, and it just gra it's a it's a gradual increase. Okay, but but at some point, the way viruses work and the way they spread epidemiologically, the viruses the way they spread, and at some point when the density gets so much, when the numbers get so much in a population, in a certain population, then it begins to one person giving it to two, two giving it to four, four giving it to eight, eight giving it to 16, 16 to 32, 32 to 64. <clears throat> so instead of one to two to three to four, it, be it begins going logarithmically, uh, if you will, with the, with the growth. And that growth in and of itself is where you start seeing the curve go up very sharply. It starts out slow and then all of a sudden it, it's, it's a snowball rolling down the hill. You're just getting from left to right. You're getting more than just, just you know, it's, it's exponential. So you know, what, what, we're, what we're concerned about in this county, and that's why I keep preaching, please everybody do what they're supposed to, is because we're headed for that if we're not careful. <laughs> we're headed kind of for that. So that's the difference between the linear and exponential. It's, it's the difference in the growth of the way it is. And, and that is a factor of how many new cases we're having today. As I said over the last 14 days, we've been averaging over seven, case, seven new cases a day. Now, we're, at this point, we're still linear, but it, we're, you know, it's going to break into an exponential if we're not careful. We're, we're headed in that direction if we're not careful. Now, that being said, the, the, the density of, of uh, contagious, or the density of, of, of the population that we have at any given time that is capable of giving it to somebody else on the number of of positive cases that we have in the county <clears throat> at any given time uh, because it, it because generally they can spread it from the time they get it to 14 days afterward. That's what we say, the 14 days. So if you'll think about the number of people that they can spread it to, the, the larger the amount of people, the way our numbers are going up, the more likely it is for it to get into the schools, okay, if that makes sense. So. Well, my, my thing was it's starting it now instead of starting it later is because if, if my projections are correct and, and I'm, I, I get information from people a lot smarter than me too and they believe, they believe this as well, uh, that we're, we're, not, we're not going anywhere except up and we're going up fast and spend count. So um, because we're not, people are not listening to what we're supposed to do and we're not mitigating this, we're not, there's no way we're, we're, we're doing any of the things we should be really doing. So, my, my thing was, if we get started now in school, uh, maybe we can get some school in before the density gets up so much and it gets in the schools, we have to close the schools now. That was my, that was my thoughts about starting it early. Because if you start it later, the number's going to be higher and you're going to have a higher, you're going to have a higher incidence of getting into, into the schools. Now, another thing that's interesting, some of the studies, that came out, and of course the American Academy of Pediatrics, and I've listened to what they say, they, they set guidelines as far as opening up schools, and then I've looked at those very closely. They, uh, they uh, attained some studies that were done about uh, a week and a half, or two, two weeks ago. The studies weren't done then, but it was reported in the journals and the, the literature about two, two and a half weeks ago. and. It basically looks at, at students that have been that have gone back to schools in other countries, 
Now we, we're we're really behind in, in the United States. These other we've got a lot of countries that have already flattened the curve. They've gone down, and they've actually even sent their kids back to school. So so the this literature that we're looking at, these studies, statistics we're looking at, we have to understand that these are not from the United States because we have we haven't done that yet. We hadn't, our schools had to really crank back up. But the, the studies show that. It's, a, it's something a little bit different than what we would think if we, as far as the contagiousness and the way this thing is transmitted. Actually, they found out that from child to child, this coronavirus, the one that we have now, from child to child, it, it's less likely to spread from child to child. Okay, It is less likely to spread from an adult to a child. It's a little bit harder than... than but it is very easy for a child to spread it to an adult. Okay, if you do look at it, 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 that's that's a simple way of putting it. So, and they also found out, it, and, and we kind of known this, that generally speaking, children have a lesser case of it. It's, it's not as severe in children. Now, when we're talking about children, we're talking about children under under the age of 16. Any, any anybody that's over any individual that's over the age of 16, they that's considered an adult. So, so when I'm saying children, we're talking about 16 and under. And so we found out that those generally have a, 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 a lighter case of it. it does, but that doesn't mean they can't spread it. But again, it's a little bit easier to spread to an adult from a child than it is from a child to a child and from an adult to a child. So in the, so. And they also found out that in children, that with, with us, we're talking about six feet, and social distancing six feet, that's what we're talking about. But they found out that in children, three foot is equivalent to six foot. Okay, so that's going to give us a little bit more of a leeway to, uh, to put more children in a, to get closer together with less of a risk. So I think based on a lot of this, I think it's the reason why the American and pediatrics said that they they suggested that children at least start back to school in a, in a brick and mortar uh, school rather than start out on, on as, as distant learning or remote learning uh, because obviously you guys know this better than I do there's, there's a whole lot more things that they get in school than just the education I mean it's just it's, it's enormous but these are just some of the things and uh, I'm, I'm not going to just continue to go on, but I thought those those might make you feel a little bit better about the children coming back to the, the classrooms rather than, than doing the remote the remote study. Now, do I think that we're going to, we're going to have uh, children that gets COVID uh, when we bring them all back together? Absolutely, I do. I mean, uh, I was talking to Dr. Piercy, who's the commissioner of health, two days, three days ago. We had a call days are running together. But she's the commissioner of the Department of Public Health here in, 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 in Tennessee. And she she agrees with me that, yeah, you know, we're, we're going to see it. It's, it's just inevitable that we're going to see it. But, you know, if we have our, all of our measures in place to, to catch it before it spreads, we catch these, kids, these kids and get them out and isolate them, get them tested, get them out and isolate them, and all that, it, the quicker we can figure it out and move them away from cohorts, the, the groups that there, the better off we are. And so there's, there's, uh, uh, so that, I'm not, I'm going to stop talking because I can just talk all night. So, <laughs> but uh, I'll answer questions if anybody has any. I do have one question. That kind of goes to Mr. Manning's point earlier. He was talking about our teachers that go from building to building. I think it was Mr. Manning, maybe Mr. Lewis, but anyway, teachers who made building to building like uh, you know, music teachers, art teachers, uh, I don't know, I got it, counselors, maybe we have some of those that uh, that do that. Would, would you recommend not doing that? In other words, exposing those people to a lesser number of colleagues and or students? Uh, or what would you recommend in that situation? Uh, if, if you look, if you look at the recommendations from the American Academy of Pediatrics and, and the other groups that are that deal with this, uh, they, they, the, the best the best scenario is keeping the same teachers with the same cohort of students throughout the whole time and not mixing. Period. 
but 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 between, if you have to mix the teacher up with, with if you have to move either the students or the teacher around it's the, the best thing is to move the, the teacher instead of the students if you have to i mean that's the best way but the, the most safe way to do that is to have the same teachers with the same kids all the time in the same in the same spot that way you're it, it, you're less likely to spread it around from someone that may be asymptomatic and we know that we know that kids are going to be they're they're just as likely to be asymptomatic and have it and spread it around as an adult is 40 percent of the people that have it and that goes along with the, the children as well so did, did that answer your question yes sir it did and i also have a question several people have asked and my sister just texted me and reminded me to ask about buses uh how do you keep them safe on the bus that that's a, that's a good question uh there's there, there uh, of course there's a lot um, there's lots of things you can do uh, with, but, you, but you have to I mean there's limitations obviously with, with financial limitations I mean, you only have a certain amount of money that you can't you can't go completely overhaul a bus we just don't have the money to do that I wouldn't think um, so so the, th the, the, the thing they recommend is try to set only two to two, two seat if you can if you can and and have the and have assigned seating so each one of them sits in the same place every time so they'll be sitting with the same person each time and for masks to be worn in in the in the bus to have masks to be worn in the bus while they're in the bus and to sterilize the bus as much as you can or to sanitize the bus as much as you can between, uh, between, you know, before they're picked up and then after they uh, after they all were off the bus um then, then, then of course there's a lot of other things you can do too they talk about plexiglass for the bus driver they do say that the bus driver should be six foot from the students and this goes back to the fact that the students are more likely to give it to the bus driver than the bus driver to give it to the students so that keeps them safe and uh, so that they, there's um there, there's other there's other things but i think those are just probably as basic to me but now I, I don't you know there's learning limitations with all of this because we have students some buses i know makes such a route you know they're, they're full and they, they can't sit too busy and uh, so you, you you're going to have to i don't know that we could run two bus routes i don't i don't know the, i don't know the logistics of that i, I can tell you I can tell you what the most safe things are, but then you have to kind of just figure out what what we have the means to do and the ability to do when we're doing it. As far as Smith County goes, because I know there are limitations with us. We're rural. We have. I mean, we're rural, and, and a lot of those buses they go miles and miles out to get to the kids, and you know you can't. You probably can't. It wouldn't be. You can't. You can't send it, and you, you know, you gotta have extra bus drivers and extra buses and stuff. So you, you, you know, do as much of these things as you can. But I, I, I dare say that some of this we're just not gonna be able to do. If, if I'm correct. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Duke. Anybody have any other questions for Dr. Duke? Not yet. Okay. All right. So then, Mr. Smith, what was the plan that you, you and the, the principal and faculty and stuff come up with to recommend? When, whenever that we decided a group to come back, I, I think you've got to look at each school individually. And because what the high schools brought out, their kids are obviously much more mature. And what they can do online even is going to be much different, obviously, than a pre k That's what we worry a lot about is your pre-K carrying just the skills to get them. But we would do what's called a blended schedule. And you know, we talked today, like, you know, for example, Sean, if the survey's right, 60, and I don't think it's 100% accurate, but the people change your mind, but let's say it is. 60% of these people are saying they'll send their kids back. 40% so they'll probably prefer a virtual. Well, for example, Sean, with his personnel, if that was true, after two or three days, he could probably get social spacing and figure out the lunch and so on and so on. You might turn around at another school that 
that let's say that 90 percent of them decide to come back so that, that ain't going to be straight across the board it'll be different for school we might take two or three weeks to get those kids back to them we learn you know i know this sounds silly but we done a seminar on hand washing i mean probably a special seminar hand washing by the time we talked to you know my wife's a teacher she made a good point she said you know barry you bring them back in don't matter how much we talk about it, they're going to go hug and hold hands and mr you know We've got to teach, get them in small groups, we feel like, to teach them what six foot means, how we're going to eat lunch, where we're going to eat lunch at, you know, bathroom rules, washing hands, how we're going to spray, you know, we'll get into disinfectants on there and stuff in a minute, but we would do, it, it, it looks very complicated, and it is if you look at the whole thing, but if you look at just your school that's involved, it's pretty simple, you know, because they've done a great job of, getting with their faculty and getting out what they are going to get out, what they want out. So, and it also took into effect that me, Brian and I are brothers and I'm at New Middleton and, and, and he's at, at, at Gornsville. They're going, to court, they're going to work together with the principals to make sure the schedule is very conducive for the parents and so on. So it's, it's very complicated, but on the other hand, it's very simple if you look at each school. <coughs> Mr. Smith, are there plans to get <coughs> Each school kind of their own autonomy in, in that if there's a you know outbreak at the feet or Fort Trevor or you do not. Well, here's the problem. And to where we would close one school or how? how well, that as far as the outbreak problem, here's the problem with it in Smith County. I talked to one school system and you know, they were much bigger than us, and you know he said what we're going to do, we're going to shut down that particular school. But the but he also said the buses only run to that particular school. The problem is, and I'll use my kids, for example, where I'm not violating anything confidential. If, if my son gets picked up in Grant, more than likely there's something, he's infected. If he's red hot, as I call he's he's good chance not only a bus driver, but he's infected. He's infected New Middleton. He's infected going to elementary, going to high school, and Forks River at a minimum. So I think that's something once we decide to shut down, and I don't think we can shut down. And sometimes we transfer kids even within. <clears throat> So there's a possibility that one child could possibly infect every school on the bus trip. So that's right. some, that's something when the numbers, you know, and I don't care to say it, I don't agree at all with what the state recommendations are for that. They're they're saying that do you have and, and I quote three to four cases, you know, treat it and go on. I don't think you can do that. I'm, I'd like to hear. I know Kim agrees from what I, and I'd like to hear Dr. Duke's theory on that, but. You know that's something that we would have to decide at what point that hey we're going to have to shut down if we need to hopefully we wouldn't but realistically that's probably going to happen at some point and that's another reason tommy that whenever we get them in we would like to get them so that we could work with them officially at the younger that's age a lot. excuse me we'd like to work a lot one-on-one -on -one at the early grades because we think we're going to have to teach your teachers how to reteach so to speak on the computer and then help our kids learn help our kids learn uh, uh, how to be taught I guess with with uh, on the computer skills so it's going to be a different world and that what, what do you say and it's tomorrow and it's feedback us want somebody else uh, what about our you know we we I'm sure like you know, at, at this morning, can you hear me? Yeah, so, Marty, we can hear you. Hi, Anna. All right. Uh, Doctor, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. Wouldn't it be a good idea to have somebody in charge of these? Uh, I'm on the road myself right now, and I go into a lot of these food grade facilities, delivering cartons and food. And their first precaution is they have. We have, a, I think, our temperature on arrival of the digital thermometer and tell pretty distributions inside of the head. Temple, if you're a little high on my chin, is that a good idea? We might put some people in the style, let them check children to put it in the style, see if they're running the temperature. Marty, we'll get to that in a minute, but yes, there's several precautionaries. The, the average student would get, we figured today, would get the temperature taken three times before they actually walked in the classroom. Minimal. Okay. And, and, and staff, and staff. Good, good. Uh, 
That's all I want to add. That's all I was going to ask about getting some tankers checked. I, I, I just want to express, I, you know, I know within our organization, like every organization, we have people who are at risk that work for us. What, what thought process are we putting behind that? On what, Scott? At risk. <coughs> Employees that are at yeah. risk, higher risk. What, what thought process are we putting through? Well, we're following legal and we're following some guidelines. One of the, the I forwarded on to you, he was one of them that's right, I think the same for the state. And I get this wrong, we're either considered critical or essential, or both, which puts them in a different category, which basically says, you know, when you work for emergency services, you're going to expect, you know, if you work a wreck, you're going to expect your blood on you. If you work for service departments, you're probably at some point going to be in a dangerous situation. You know, as part of the expectations, is that, you know, if you're going to do this job, the hazard that goes with that, unfortunately. So, but we would take their temperature, we would, their precaution, they would be saved. There's a, there's a thing there that's also on the table that if they caught in contract, it wouldn't be any different than getting hurt on the job, so to speak. Go make our workman's comp, probably go, but there's no choice in it. It's what you pay it for. So, what's your recommendation? For what part? To start scope back on time and how? Well, like I said, I was full going after Labor Day, and that Gina knows that we talked about because we sat down again today. That's what we were going to present to y'all after the principals talked and we took their vote, and after this to Doctor Duke. I don't know. I don't. I don't know the answer, but I don't know that it's going to matter one way or the other. So I, I'm for keeping. The thing about it, here's one of the things, and I know that you, you you say it don't matter, but it does. But the PR of it, there's a, I've already I filled it calls at the office that said please don't take our fall break away because we bumped we spent our money from the summer to the fall, and I, and I probably don't need to dictate safety and education. But that's one of the things you're going to hear if you do that. You know, uh, I, I don't. From, you know, like I said I thought. To not just not that I don't trust him, but I've talked to numerous doctors and tried to, you know, here's what one of the doctors told me yesterday, and I thought, well, that's pretty good. He said, I don't really understand, and I said, what? And they said, he said, well, if you're giving them an option, why does it matter? And I said, well, I guess that's a good when you start back. Yeah, but I, I kind of, I, as I said, I don't know, but listen to Dr. Duke, it, better, it might be best to go ahead and get started. Because, uh, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know that there's a good, uh, everybody is in the same dilemma, not just in Smith County. It's the same conversations, it don't matter who we call, or it's the same thing. So, you know, we don't know if we did, we'd wait with one to fix it, you just don't want to make a mistake, you know what I mean? You don't do what's right. If, if we do decide to go ahead and start on time, you said that we would be offering some student virtual and some oh, student. I, I don't think. So are you going to get into that tonight? Yeah. Well, I'm going to feel quick, but I but I don't think where you're at. If you're in Jamestown or you're in Lebanon or you're in Memphis, you're going to have to, in my opinion, legally offer virtual. You know, you can't tell a parent, no matter how. Again, I use my kid. As far as I know, we're God bless. They're very healthy. But if I come in here and say, hey, I don't feel safe putting my child in this setting, I think we've got to offer them, and we're set up to do that. So. What, what can we offer our teachers who are immunocompromised and have health issues that their own exposure, um, you know, could cause a problem for, for them? Well, Robin, I think we can take every, you know, I talked to our principal today, obviously that, you know, somebody's at high risk, you do common sense things as far as, you know, you wouldn't want them working uh, hall duty and, and, and bus duty and unloading the buses, you'd, you'd minimize their exposure as much as possible. You know, we and, and and I'll go over all the different safety things we we get in place. But obviously, if they work in the public, there's going to be some risk. We just do everything we could to accommodate those people. And with with virtual classrooms, the kids who are doing student uh, learning virtually, will they have a teacher who is teaching virtually, or are they going to be a part of the classroom that is you know ongoing? with their peers. How's that going to work? Gina, I'm going to let Gina address it, but there's actually three different ways you could go with this, but I'll let her address it. She's more depth than I am. But. Okay, so we actually have two pathways, and I wish I had my stuff in front of me, but we have two pathways. One is virtual, and that is the virtual path that the parents will commit by July the 24th, 
and that is through Odyssey Wear. We already have some Odyssey Wear. That's how we've done credit recovery and some new courses in the summer and summer school. But these students will be on Odyssey Wear, and we will assign a, a an instructor. But the instructor is more of a monitor over their learning. To, to make sure, Robin, they're logging on and that they're they're actually turning in their homework and, and trying to keep yeah. up. Yes. Is that monitor a certified teacher? Or yes. Like a, uh, okay. Yes, that will be a certified that, that teacher. That would still be on their caseload counting toward their BEP funding. Yes, but right. we don't yeah. know how many or who we can assign to that until we have numbers. We talked about that. It might be that, you know, one school needed three if the numbers was correct, but it might be that we took one and put it three schools, depending on that. Just, that's, that's another reason we went to flexibility to to let each school do the demographics after we got going and seeing what actually showed up. If if the child needed help doing something and the parent wasn't able to get yeah. help, who would the child This This assigned person would be the with them. Assigned teacher. Like, I'd be your teacher, okay? And even though you're on this, you could, we would have contact either in a chat box or directly pretty much all day long, just like a teacher. Same way we do alternative school. And then the second path is your traditional learner who is in school. And those students might have to go what we're called remote learning due to uh, exposure. And they would still be under their classroom teacher. That, that would be where learning, your Chromebooks come in learning. and they're teaching. They're sitting there watching me teach live and 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 you're sitting there, you may be under uh, 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 quarantine and you can keep right up with your class or what we use the thumbnail drive to send home or depend on. And as long as they can continue with the educational setting, even though they are remote, they will not be counted absent. So it looks like that plan for the students and the parents we have an alternative where you can go to school and, and participate or you can register and go virtual. Right, yep, two choices. So they ought to be happy. But then at the same time, I also worry about our faculty and staff too. You know, them that's going to be exposed. But you said you have some things in but, place. But again, there's no, I mean, if I don't work for Joe down there at the top, I might get cut. I mean, I hate to say that, but I mean, that's part of working. You've got to take a Anything you do is going to have a risk to it. We're going to do everything in our power to protect those people. But, you know, you have risk every day. What you do is just different kind of risk. And I'm sure we're going to mandate masks for the ones that uh, will be. Well, here, you want me to just kind of, at yeah, a right like point, what, you'd like to go hear what? I'd like to see what you're saying. Okay. Guidelines. All right. Pretty lengthy, but all right. We, we, we've we already done in-service with our, with our upper admin okay on the, on the things with on the sprays the different how they're to be applied what we can use there's a there's a very specific list that has to be approved by the fda and so on and the cdc uh david had already done that they will pass that on to their employees and he will also do that same in service but more in depth with the custodians like like even down there custodians they will be you know you're walking to mcdonald's and you'll go in the bathroom and we're going to go down to, Prove that they're documented, what they use, when they use, and so on. Uh, at night, there wasn't a different cleaning than what we've done in the past. All right, or buses, or buses by law are supposed to be walked through twice a day anyway. So as they're walking through in the morning and afternoon, they will be sprayed down with this product we call a uh, uh, stash. Uh, it's at the orange sitting there. They fuss on me because I've got a coating in the office every morning. And, and we use it, it'll be used. All right. I said the teachers will receive training on whether now they also need to wipe down the toys, pencils, so on. Uh, there will be a, a supply list at each school with supply stations. So if you walk in Union Heights, there'll be a table sitting there where they'll have gloves for the public and or students and or we'll get to teachers in just a second because I, I think there's a little issue about us being able to make them, but we'll talk about the bond. Well, we can't can't but but there'll be a supply stations throughout the school okay they'll have gloves different kinds of masks face shields uh we, we in this grant we wrote they were very good to what we asked for they had to give us everything pretty much we asked for and and we wrote in what we're kind of, we're still in the process of naming it something a little more attractive but it's called covid 
a COVID EA, because that's going to take a lot off these principles. Not there. All they're going to be doing is answering questions. Uh, uh, that person would get a lot of training. Hopefully, if we can find them, that's the big thing at each school. Um, uh, they're going to take temperatures as needed. They're going to, uh, anything they're needed to do within that building uh, on this code. Deal. We also got down to them. Uh, we were in poultry business for years. You, when you got the genetics, you had to wear the booties, even up, went over your boots. We've got booties, we've got disposable, complete outfits. Looks like you're going into a uh, war zone, you know. Uh, we've got, uh, 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 like I so said, we talked about the bathrooms, the gyms are going to have to have special treatment, obviously. PE classes is going to have to change the way they think as far as the six foot rule. Uh, balls are going to have to be wiped down after every t group comes in and out. And it's going to take time. It's going to take training. It's going to take a lot of supplies. Uh, bathrooms in those gyms are going to be used different. The, the gyms itself may be used different because we may have to use those for lunchrooms. We've been talking to our PE teachers about that. You know, if we're going to space these kids out, we can't, obviously, that's one of the most congregated places is the, is the cafeteria. So we're going to, you know, even today is a little hot, but on, until it starts getting too cold this fall, we can use the outside a lot for air and out. So um, we're going to have a quarantine area. Each school is going to designate a room, hopefully as far away from things as they can get. That if, if you come up and say, you know, Mr. Smith, I'm not feeling well, we're going to start taking temperature and get you in that room, isolate you. And again, that's got to have certain procedures to clean that room back down. They'd contact one of the school nurses, and then at that point, we'd have a procedure about checking, you know, are you meeting this criteria? You know, call the parent. We'd like you to get a test, so on and so on. Uh, we talked about the COVID. Uh, uh, we're uh, following closely by, by what all the, they, well, they, we get this much every day from CDC and the chain, but Kim's been very good. We're picking through the things we think that we need that these teachers and principals pray it are to send this stuff to you because you know, we're trying to pass it on. Uh, uh, thermometers. Uh, we we started uh, when this first came out. I told Trisha at the start. I said, "Don't tell anybody anywhere. Start ordering thermometers because they're going to get to where you can't get them." So she started ordering them, and they started putting a limit on them. We bought some in everybody's name that we could think about, them, and they let us associate the school system every person in this system from a bus driver to an educational assistant to a principal has a thermometer okay and and like you said we're going to have to develop some guidelines to back our people up to be dead on but what we handed out says 100.4 okay but but we've got spray bottles we bought 400 more we dilute our stuff we bought uh 99.9 percent .9 alcohol so if it gets bad enough we can't get our own sanitizer you know that that's what that is. You see me carrying it around. It's on my wipes. I pour it down in. Um, we talked about the face guards, sneeze guards, safety face shields, uh, uh, front desk. We're talking about putting this, you know, even down to the signing out of students. You know, we if Joe Taylor pulls up and we know it's Joe and can see him on the camera, you know, we got to be careful if it's somebody, a new student or something. But we're going to let parents say hey this is Joe Taylor I can see it can't wave at it and let that kid come in so it's no contact even on the sign in sign in we're going to cut visitors down unless it's an absolute like an IEP that has to have a an advocate in it but other than that we're going to cut all that out uh, uh, we've tried to think Tommy of any angle with the wipe downs we got we, we've bought supplies for the last six months and so we think we're in pretty good shape and all these meet CDC and FDA guidelines because that's another thing that you have to be very cautious of. Make sure we're doing that. So those are just a few things that we're doing. You know, the principals. We talked about that today. You know, they're even going to have to make sure. And it's hard as teachers. You know, they ain't seen each other. And they're going to want to be in the teachers' lounge. We're, they're going to have to social distance. I mean, it's going to be huge whenever we go back. Could we like take our lunches back to our classrooms? Or? That, well, here's your problem. Right now, we can't get the federal government to give us duty free. Like by law, even even if he says it's okay, by law he has to have a duty free lunch. And we tried to we're trying to get that waived right now, but the commissioner of education is saying they can't get it waived. <clears throat> 
same with the PE. We're hoping they'll waive some of the PE hours so we can use that PE teacher to help us with the lunch so we can spread them out in the gym. If we, if we could actually use the gyms, we'd be in really good shape because we could spread them out and get our distance in with the cafeteria. And it's going to be very, you know, it, it's going to be, whether we're virtual, whether we're school, it won't be like from March on for a teacher. It's going to be one of the most challenging years for a teacher and probably in the history of teaching. Okay, it's going to be extremely stressful for them. Because we're going to have to ask a lot of them. So, Director, did you tell me uh, through some conversations that we were, we were planning, like, like this planning opening date <clears throat> is very asymilar to all the counties that are touching us? Well, it, it is very similar, Scott. It, we took we took part of Wilson County. Now, what Wilson County is doing a little bit different. But, no, but, I'm not talking about structurally now. Okay. I'm talking about the day. The uh, actual opening day? Yes, sir. I, the only one that I know, that, and I've tried to talk to all of them that I know, well, I'm not saying it, and they're like us. I think they're bored and some of this changing and some of it. But, you know, I've talked to everybody that I know of, and I'm not misleading you. I hope if I tell you something different, you go look it up. I'm not doing it on purpose. Macon County changed theirs two weeks, I think. I think they went from starting date to the 24th. Is that right, Steph? I think that's about right. And then everybody, uh, Nashville went straight virtual. And I think, I'm telling you right, there's everybody else is going on their, on their regular starting dates. But now I, I'm not. Which he is? Right around, we all start within a week of each other, most of the right. Now, with that being said, can I ask Dr. Duke a question? Yes, sir. Roger, can you hear me all right? Yes, I can. Go ahead. Hey, buddy. Um, let me ask just a quick question. If if the scenario is that counties adjoining us are basically going to start on or about the same day that we are, would it benefit us any to start two weeks later? to see what happened in those counties so that we don't replicate those mistakes. Will that benefit us any at all for our, our folks, do you think? Well, yes, and I think we discussed that even a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about some other reasons that you could delay. Now, when I, when I, we were, I was talking about delaying it and maybe the possibility of having a higher count uh, that's relative. You know, you, you may you might want to weigh that with some of the other reasons to make it. You know, to start later. Um, one of the reasons would be if, if your infrastructure is not. If you, if you don't have every, if you can't, if time doesn't allow you to get all these things in place uh, before the time that uh, that school should start and have it in place and nail down. You know, all these these things that that uh, Mr. Smith has just gone over then that would be a, a reason to delay it, you know, so you can make sure you've got all that down pat, you know, before you start. That would be a good reason to delay it. Also, yes, it's always good to know what what happens somewhere else. These these other counties, it, it would be nice to see what's happening with them. Uh, but I don't know that you could, every county is just a little bit different, although the virus don't see the, the lines of the county, but every county is just a little bit different because when we start looking at counts every day, some counties has more, some county has less, some of them are more densely populated in, in certain areas, some of them are not. So, so I don't know that uh, if, it, if, if something happened in another county that we could incorporate that to our county, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Uh, but, um, you know. Yes, uh, well, you, you kind of see the angle that I'm driving at here, if, if we, if my, my point being, if we delayed any and, and watched the systems akin to ours that were adjoining ours, irregardless of the population or whatever, to see what the successes or the failures were and, and then, you know, try to avoid the failures, obviously, and try to replicate the successes you know, does that does that benefit us any at all, or or is it just going to happen and that's about the size of? It? Well, if if, if we if if, our, if everybody's it's 
not just us. Our numbers are not the only ones going up. And if our numbers keep going up, and, and uh, if everybody just continues to keep going up, there's going to be more likelihood that our students are going to be getting it uh, as we go on. And uh, so, I, my own my opinion is it's it's going to happen. I mean, we're going to have infections. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't see that there's any way we can get around it. Um, so, um, I, yeah, I, I, I just, uh, I don't, I, I, can, I can see where you're coming from, Scotty. I, I really can. I, I, that, I mean, it might be, it might be worth sitting back a couple of weeks and seeing what happens with everybody else. But what may happen with everybody else, and I, I hate to say this, it may be that, you know, we, we might not ever get to start back. Well, and, 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 and you and I have known each other for a long time, and, and you know where I'm coming from. I'm looking for an angle to give us some kind of leverage that we can win in some way, and you understand that. Yeah, I, it, I mean, I, I, could, I couldn't argue with your, your you know, with your, uh, the, the, you know, the, 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 you're looking at that. I couldn't argue with that fact at all. I mean, uh, there's, there's no, uh, and again, the reason why I was talking about the landing was just I thought if, if, if everything goes downhill because the numbers keeps going up and we start getting a lot of infections and we have to shut things down, at least we've got them in school for a while. Um, that, that was my thoughts about it. Uh, right. Because, again, the numbers are going in the wrong direction. If, if, if our numbers had planed off and everybody's numbers were out planed off and everybody's doing what they're supposed to, I would, that's, that's a different story. But, but it's not that way. Everybody's numbers just keeps going. So the out, outside of the school is just continuing to get worse instead of better uh, all around us. And so, uh, and, and it's eventually going, that's going to affect what's going to happen in the school. And, 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 uh, I think it, it's just impossible not to do. Thank you. Thank you. It sounds like the staff maybe needs the two week if we can get them in to get them trained the, the children trained on if we have to shut down again in two weeks it sounds like they need to get them in so they can get them trained on the computer especially the younger children yeah. they may not have a whole lot of i was going to ask mr smith help at home i, I agree with Brian here what's the direct what's the, your your uh, what's the your opinion or direction you'd like to see personally after sitting here I've changed the team and said, let's go ahead and start on time. But what, what is your recommendation to the board? Well, I'd like to see us do the, either the two-week delay or the start on time. I, I, don't, I would personally, I, I just feel like when you get past that time, you're going to put, see, let me, let me explain to you, Doc, we, if we get into that, and we're going to do what's safe for children. Now, we're going to do that first. That's what we're recommendation. But if you get end of that second, first, second week of September, you don't just affect this year. It's going to get us, we're not going to have any breaks, and then we're going to get out in June, and then you're going to start back in July, and it affects the morale for two years, you know. Over but two weeks? It's going to, no, if you push it to September. Okay. Yeah. If, but if you, you're still going to take away probably, and, and it don't matter, that shouldn't dictate what we do for safety. No, but, but But you're still going to take away your breaks, you're going to take your fall break and your spring break away, you know, and that that's, not a negative, that's just stating facts. Well, we're probably going to have to, because you got to make that those days up some work, you know what I mean? So we can make it work, whatever that you want to do to make are, it work. Are we ready to go if we open up the day we're supposed to open up? We're going to be as ready as, as and, and the, the only thing that two weeks too would buy is sometime getting our computers in. Well, I think get, say 50% get of the kids decided to do virtual, are we ready to get to go 50% of the kids virtual? It's a, the same plan that Scotty and Dr. Dick said is exactly the reason we released. We've not dug our foot. We've been on top of this morning. So what we did, we were sitting and seeing what was released at this county and what they threw up in about and what we released it. What we looked and said, hey, we ought to do a better job at this. So we released what we released on purpose. So it's so much to digest one time. Because as if you're not in the school business, there's just so much out there. But we, we will make this work whatever time you tell us to start. If you tell us to start last week, September, we'll make it work. But I, I would like to see us start somewhere in August if we could. 
but we make it work if it's. I think it's kind of hard to base school by school and you know. See what they're going to do. You don't know what you mean to measure, what guidelines they've got whatsoever, or how that account is affected by them. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's not really comparing apples to apples. You know, well, you know, they got it. You know, you, know, you, you see what I'm trying to say. I mean, they, you, you may have a school, like you can, may not have the prevention measures that we're going to have. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's just that it's a there's not a perfect, yeah. you know, you're going to be split no matter how we go, if we go in the middle, as far as we just, you know, we are, and I think we are, I think we're having a good discussion on what's best for kids, you know. Well, what does this board got to do tonight? I mean, if we don't do nothing, we still start on, we still. Yeah, if you don't do right. nothing, you're going to start on that. You have a school calendar that's been approved by this board and been approved by the state. If you amend that school calendar, which you have every right to do, um, like we said at the start, you'll probably you'll have to call a special meeting to vote on that. But there's nothing wrong to give Mr. Smith a consensus of where this board stands in that regard, so he can make preparations. And you need to set you a meeting next week and vote on it. As far as what you can do tonight, you can give him your impression on it. But I don't think you can take a vote to amend that calendar because it's got to go back to the calendar committee, be approved would, by this would board. Would it be Would it be legal if they give me an idea? I'll, I'll give you my sure. opinion. We start on time. Okay. Start on time, we do it virtual, and or you show up in class. Right? All right, but let's say That's we decide to do the two weeks. Would it be as a uh, general field? Could yes. we go ahead legally and get our calendar committee in so that we could propose it? And just say if we do. Okay. So then they had the calendar built that we would approve to y'all that would send in the state if that was an option. What do you want to do? Well, I think I, if I was. Mr. Smith, I would just pull the bowl record right now and see that which direction. Yeah, that's it's, it's you know, and that, I just told you how I would go. Yeah. Before you do that, Mr. Chairman. Yes. May we take a three minute break? Uh yes. So uh, we need a motion to take a break. I think we can we just take a no, break. Just, just, just take a three minute break.
Where did everybody go? Run them in. It's hard. And yeah, we can't get that air. It's so hot. He won't put it down. You know what roof side. Everybody back. I believe everybody's back. Let's just poll the board and see what. Hey, could I ask a question? Yes. I want Gina to define virtual and remote. Virtual learning. We're going to call it virtual cat. Students attend school in a virtual academy, which is a virtual classroom at home setting. Students will be assigned a virtual learning instructor, which will be one of our teachers, for coordinating the virtual academy. Instruction will be the responsibility of the parent to ensure students are attending the online courses that are in compliance with the state guidelines for attendance on a virtual campus, which is seven hours daily of online instruction. Now, when we say seven hours daily, they are not on a computer seven hours a day. We go to school. We go to school seven hours a day. That is our school day and they are actually one of our students. They're just at home. But you get bathroom breaks, you get lunch, you get recess. I'm just saying hello, Rachel, say goodbye. You get, you know, you gotta use some common sense there. We ask that they would- I would say Joe P.E., for example. P.E., yes. You know, we're gonna have to do something, you probably get those kids in or off for If you do that, then we can get them in to, to get some P.E. class. And then, I know before the PE teacher did some drills and some different stuff with them, you know. Odyssey Ware for grades 3 to 12 has a PE course. There's a PE course for, for on Odyssey Ware. Students attend in virtual learning in the virtual academy will use Odyssey Ware, an online learning resource that will be purchased through the district. This is not cheap. That's why we have to know the number because we'll have to have that many licenses. We have enough license right now for our students that we use already. Yeah, this too, that, that's why that we've got to get a head count too. You know what we're talking about? They have to sign a contract. We have to buy that for so long. So if X number signs up in here, we've got to pay that licensure. So, that's really, so, if you don't, we'll get it. You know, you know how in the past we've seen people, if they were upset, would use homeschool, yeah. you know, or they didn't like a teacher. This way they can't, I can't get mad Scotty, then jump off and then jump back on. We've either got to be in or out. 
that semester where if I sign my child up for virtual, he signed up for virtual, so three months, he's not, or two months, he's not going to stop, so I want to put him back in the classroom. Yeah, he's because it, it's cost us us money on that license. That's the reason. Well, and, that, and I think Scotty asked a good question earlier about, about people and their jobs. I mean, that's another reason we got to get them in because we got to have that head count. Even if they're virtual, they count toward that teacher's roster, so it helps them keep a job. Yeah, they're in the EAs and like, you know yeah. everything. Right. It will be the it will be the responsibility of parents enrolling their children in the online learning to ensure that the student meets all requirements of attending school in the virtual academy. Students who do, do not fulfill the attendance obligation of the virtual program as required by the state of Tennessee will be removed from the program and must attend school using option one. We will check attendance by it could be a Zoom meet. It could be, are they doing their uh, homework, their assignments? We can monitor through the computer whether kids are actually doing their assignments or not. We need to talk and, about And I Dusty? Mean, kind of like you do an AR, <clears throat> the way they know if you read it, there's this content. It might be a two question, but you know, it's a. Okay. Stop, stop right there just a moment. Let me clarify something in my brain with that, okay? Okay. That is where these Chromebooks are. The Chromebooks coming in. We're going to supply these kids with the machines. Well, to do that. On, on the commitment, we asked that it would be nice if they have their own device. Some of them, Scotty, 78% of them says they have that. They may not be that high, okay? But if they need one, we feel like we we'll have that to supply to them. We've got 2,000 already, and then we got another 1,200 order. Now, part of them will have to go to our teachers because they don't have the updated one. It's got the camera and everything on it. So, Part of that supply will go to our teachers too, so I bet it won't be nothing, very few, you know what I mean? But my, my point is, every child, regardless, let's say that that number drops from, you know, they, they fill out the survey and for whatever reason it's 78%, and that number, when we hit the ground, becomes 50%. We're, we're going to be able to take care of that family. So we we really feel out. like. We really feel like if we had none in the county, we would be close, but we think we got sick. So like I said, if it really was a way off, or they needed an updated version, we think we could do it. On their end, they need internet, is what they need. They need good internet. Virtual. You know. The virtual people, the, but, the students who choose to go virtual would need good internet. Here was another interesting statistic that would have shocked me. 85% of the, of the 2,900 something said they had high speed internet. And I was shocked at that. I wouldn't have thought it would have been that high. But, but you don't have too many rural people out in the county that's responded to that survey. That yeah, that awful. Uh, so, but we do have a a plan, hopefully, and she'll get to that. If, okay. Do the best we can, okay? Parents who choose the virtual academy will be committed, committing to this learning pathway for a complete semester for grades 3 12. So that's a semester. That's a semester. Now, the grades 3 12 have a full uh, library of content. Uh, a full nine week grading period for grades K2. So after nine weeks, if parents are not happy with the virtual academy using Odyssey Wear, then they can look at coming back into the traditional setting. And the reading, the reason being that we did nine weeks for K2 is Odyssey where it only has reading and math, which is mainly what we concentrate on in K2 anyway, but it only has reading and math. That's why we let them, after nine weeks, look at if they want to come back. Well, three to 12, you're committed for the Three through 12, it is a semester. One more question. And let's just say, we let the principals vote on that. We did not just come up with that ourselves. We let the principals vote to tell us what they wanted but to do. But if Johnny be good and Jamie be good is not meeting what they're supposed to require, we'll jerk them out and put them right back in. Uh -huh. like said, we have that option. Ath athletes, if it's, if it's, your athletes, will they be required to do virtual also or will they have to be on campus? We, we talked about it. We feel like, I don't, I, I don't see this, and I'm just going, I don't see you can, say it's okay for the same program and it's classified homeschool and we allow them to do it and not allow if they're meeting requirements. And I, I'd hate to see a child penalized because a parent feel, really felt like the safety of their child and they were doing everything they could we asked to do. Now I will say some of the school systems around us, they're not allowing their athletes to participate if it's 
and it's not on campus. Well, we would. That was, that's our, that's my recommendation. That's well, we do that with all school students. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And and to be honest with you, we we were hoping that we'll get some homeschool people back because we're offering a fantastic education, and it would be there the same thing now as homeschool. You know, just because you classified it there in homeschool, I don't really think it's fair that you say Tucker. If I decided to go virtual, it wouldn't be fair to punish him just because of the label. That's just my that's my philosophy but now i'm not i'm sure the systems have their reason for that but i don't feel comfortable saying we can let one not the other you know what i mean if they're meeting the requirements well i'm just filling the question that sure I sure unless that. there's a twsaa violation or anything you know what i mean and i'm not aware of it i'm not saying and they we you never know we've not been real we'll come and getting information what they're going to do either but and then it says devices will meet will be made available at no cost to parents if needed so it's if needed the school district will not provide internet access to the home that's virtual that's virtual now we were told this that i forgot what company it was they they got a a, a graph that shows the dead spot scanning they would if we would let them know they would park different devices like they're mobile and they would pull them in different places to where if we say we had 12 students within a certain area they would try to help us out put some mobile things up to get us through this so that's that's a, that's an avenue word and it's free free service You're talking about like a booster or something yeah like yeah well, way i took scale almost like a truck i could take a mobile truck and park it and it would you know if we said we had several in that area i'd say play and shade certain areas of full trevor you know certain areas of united if we had to, they told us we would let them know they would try to work with us on that. Um, Dusty has really worked with Odyssey Wear a lot more than I have because we uh, use Odyssey Wear for new credit and for credit recovery. Dusty, you want to tell a little bit from your standpoint how you've seen it work as a principal? I'll do my best. Uh, normally, we have summer school for kids that were failing in new credits. So, uh, since we didn't have some school, we had to try to learn it ourselves on the fly. And uh, you can you can kind of pick for a semester. It, it has a spot that tells you it is your midterm, your midway through in your semester exam. Uh, and if you're going to the full virtual uh, agreement that we're talking about, Coach Murray was explaining to me because he does the Odyssey Wire at the alternative school. It will actually tell how many lessons you would do today for English, for math, to stay on pace for the semester. Uh, inside of that, uh, there are some questions that are multiple choice that student would answer and get immediate feedback, and some things that are a written response, so the teacher would have to actually go on uh, and look at it and see your answer, and sometimes your answer may be worth 10 points or maybe worth 25. So that, that's what we're talking about. Also, the uh, a true teacher, English teacher, math teacher, uh, would be online and have to be involved, whether it be email, chat boxes, or uh, meetings, Google Meet, or Zoom, whatever. So it, it's a it's a pretty good program. Uh, it covers just about all our just about all our subjects. And back to the um, four to six hours that we asked on the computer. Some of that depends on your the student's ability. And, the, and that's the same with homework. Some children can complete a homework assignment in 15 minutes, and some it might take 30. So we can't just say, you know, you got to do four hours, and that's it. Because all kids are different. Gina, what happens if we're talking about the previous semester? Uh -huh. <clears throat> what happens if we have a, a student or students or family or whatever that, that you know, they, they enter it this way for a semester? And for whatever reason, they just don't think it's working out. Maybe their child needs human interaction, mm -hmm. like a lot of us do, and things like that. So at the end of that semester, they can just flip back to some other traditional style. They can come back to in person. They have to come back in person. Mm -hmm. the, were we not talking about two different types of learning outside of the building? <coughs> not just virtual, but. Uh, yeah. The remote. The remote. the remote. Well, if they come back to in person and we are in a remote situation, then they would participate in remote learning. 
I, I guess the I think he's asking could it just go remote. I, all you're talking about all the students would go to remote. Right. You're saying if the schools got shut down and they're going to shut down for three the, months, we're going to remote set. So the virtual kids right. turn around and go okay. to remote. No, 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 no. They stay with no. virtual. Yes, they're on their own schedule. Okay. But all the other kids go to remote. Yes, yes. But he's Again, asking if they wanted to drop out of virtual. They can come back. They to can go back and go remote if we're all, if the system's on remote. Well, in, well, in a sense, but I, I guess what I was getting at was we, we had multiple options for families that that had within their home at risk people. We have two you know, So so that our children, you know, are are, are not running as high risk of of bringing this home. I, I mean, obviously, you know, but we're offering multiple options there as well. Right? We have so, two: traditional in person or virtual. virtual. Another challenge, if if we end up going, you know, Stephanie's sitting back there. We've talked, and, and we're going to do everything we can when and if that comes up to get these children fed again, like we did when we shut down. That's and it's going to be a lot on her. She's she's working on that already, man. Trying to plan ahead. No. Okay, once we're done, you want to go Explain, explain why we would be on remote. Why would I be on remote? If you're traditional students, uh, if we're, we're in school and it happens to be shut down like it was in the spring, those traditional in-person students would be still with their teacher, but their teacher would teach them remotely through Google Classroom, through G Suite. So the ones that are virtual, they're, they're already, they're still virtual. They're still they're still virtual. virtual. Because they're on their own program. They're it's on their own not program. Virtual or remote. No. no. The only way it ended up in remote is if we shut down. Right. It's virtual and tradition. It's or virtual. Or quarantine. Or like or short, short term. term. Like, Scotty, if I was on quarantine, then you could keep. Oh, you could go to remote. You could roll. Yeah. Remote. We're doing you that so that trying to take as much off the teachers right. as we can. Right. If you didn't, right. it's so much for them that. Right. So in, in the virtual, and, and, and I'm sorry. You're okay. You know, one one thing that that whenever we start, uh, that I, I definitely do not want to do is, you know, we've already got this going on. I, I don't want to do anything that's going to impact a family economically. You know, where a, a parent just says, "No, my child just can't," whatever, and they have to quit their job or something. You know, and run the risk of losing a house or whatever. I don't. I don't want us to do anything that's that's going to create that scenario. So, in a virtual environment, while they would not be remote assigned to a teacher in a classroom, so to speak, they would be, as as Dusty was explaining, in contact either like with chat with somebody there with them and, and all of that. Is that? Am I they have right? a teacher assigned to them. Okay. Just like we do, we do the same thing with summer school. We do the same thing with uh, well, new you credit. Well, I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. I just don't want. I, you know, we're facing one kind of disaster. And I just don't want to have an economic disaster on somebody's hands at the same time. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Any other questions, comments? Uh, yeah, just real briefly, and then uh, we can move on to whatever y'all want to do or whatever we need to do next. But it's been brought up to me and this is a good point that if it seems to, that we can't vote if, on a, a just calendar change tonight because if we we're going to do anything different than it's already been approved then it's going to have to go back to the calendar committee and so on if we do that we need we've got to give these parents enough time to make a decision and i think the way that i understand it the Odyssey where stuff is due the 24th currently. So I want to make sure that we give our parents an opportunity to have ample time to make the decision that's best for their kids and their family. Robin, we, we, we that's what we went on. We said we wanted to get through tonight and make sure we're the board and everybody was at, but we didn't want to get information out there and have to retract it. That's, you know, because right. and, then, exactly. and that's yeah. the only reason we release things periodically like we have uh, but I, I agree we've talked about we're gonna to have to, to do a really good job 
not only on our website, but maybe do some commercial spots to make sure these parents and children are very educated on what we're asking of them. Let's just right. let's just poll the board and see if this is even an issue. I mean, if everybody, if the board wants to go back regular time, it's not let, even. Let an me issue. say this, though, because I'm going to be as fair to every side of it on the information. Danny, I say, would when when are you expecting the Chromebooks in? I got told the end of August, the first part of September. Okay, I'm just saying if you had them in and it's a programming issue, because I didn't know exactly when. If it would help, the two weeks might help in some way. I was trying to think if that would help you in the program, but if they're not in, we figure we, they're not going to be in. They're not going to be in even if we start, because I do not expect them the end of August. I'll be shocked. Uh, but if we do get them in, we're expecting it to take. And this is us working around the clock. We're looking at on the best case scenario, two to three weeks to because all 1200 Chromebooks got to be set up and worked on. But you're sitting on 2000. Right? Yeah, we're yeah, they're ready. There. They're ready. So we yeah. can't use I just trying to think if it would help any I was trying to, if the time the pros that there's anything else that might help us. Let's poll everybody. Do you want to start two weeks late? Or do you want to start on time? Mr. Mann. On time. Mr. Shoulders. Mr. Shoulders. On time, I'm reading his lips. I can't hear him. Shake your head. We can't hear you, Mr. Shoulders. Hit your... Unmute, please. Unmute. Lower left-hand corner, Mr. Shoulders. There okay, we go. Yeah. 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 Okay. Start on time. Mr. McCallum. Uh, two weeks late, Labor Board. That, that won't be. That's that's a different vote, Mr. McCaleb. Two, two weeks. Well, not on time. Two weeks. Okay. 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 Miss Moore. Okay. Two weeks late. Mr. Lewis. Two weeks. Mr. Taylor. Two weeks. Mr. Apple. On time. On time. So, four and four. <laughs> Don't go us on time. Huh? Polls on time. Five votes change. Yeah. Five votes just stay the same. So it would be it would start on time then. If it's four and four, correct? Yeah, you, right. If it, if it's, yep. I mean it's yeah, not an right. actual vote. It's, not, it's a vote. not a vote. It's not a vote. It's a poll. That's nothing. You know, I mean it really means nothing. But let, that, let me do let me throw this out here too, so everybody understands. You. You got this thing's changing by the week. Yeah, we might be having a total different discussion this time it's, it's about it. By the day. Yeah, that the day. right. I want to make sure y'all understand that it, it's it. Every day we're getting a ton. I just didn't think we could have everything ready to start on time. With the and all that kind of stuff. I thought yeah. we needed it. Well, that's he said. Not going to he said that's right. going to be end of September before we ever get them yeah, set that's up. Right. And we're going to be the same place right? that part of it either way. That, yeah, the, the, I would, I would, in my opinion, technically wise, the amount that we have would cover what would be needed. However, Barry, let me ask you this: if, if, if we say we're starting on time, all this stuff, that is that is our assumption. That once you get the staff in there, and, and we don't have the infrastructure, then you're going to have to do something. That, that, that's that's the point I was trying to make. We could very well that kill these numbers or crazy and we've talked about that we it could change they could have it yeah. yeah I want you to understand it's not it's from lack of our planning that, but we don't uh, my, so, so what my, my point being since since this is changing so much and I mean I'm impacted every day I you know I suppose I talk to Dr. Pete too much because I'm, I'm square in the middle of it all day long every day and and just see it maybe but my point being, you know, even though with best intentions, if we say on time, we'll say, and I'm going to use Fort Trevor because that's my district, we get back to school and, and we don't have the state to, to run that, we don't have the infrastructure to run that facility. What will, what will we do? do we just that, that could happen if you started two weeks late. He's not going to know until you get school started. That's not my question. My question is, do we do we stop the whole school system, or do you just stop on the river and roll on with the rest of it? Well, that's that's what I said earlier. So they, the recommendations are shutting down, but I think the way we're structured here, 
I don't think you can shut down because we're so integrated from siblings at other schools, same buses goes to at least five schools, you know, some of them transfer students. Like I said, they can be situations where one bus can affect every, yeah. you know. So I think if we shut down, my opinion, if we shut down one, we're gonna shut down. Could you, could you use a snow day? Well, we can ask for stockpile days. Yeah. I think after, for sure, after we get started, we could, we've even discussed where they would allow us to use them if we didn't use them at the end, but it's just a gamble because you don't, you might end up having to miss three weeks of snow, you know? But we think we might could after we get going. Yep. So if without the infrastructure, if it's one facility, we would have a I, I feel like, you know, we don't look at it, but I feel like, yes, I mean, I think I've expressed to most y'all in here, I hope that I'm wrong, but I can't see us making it very long without being there. I agree. That's the reason, that's but that's why it's crucial for us to get them in and get a head count. See, that's been the whole plan the whole time. We've had to create a situation to get people in to see how many really wants to go virtual when it comes right to take. That's really that, that commitment's there. And got, and we put a short time, but enough time, you need to make your mind up because we've got to get how many virtual teachers do we need, how many computers do we need. Let's get our teachers trained as much as we can in case this thing does shut down. We got, not like we was the last time, you know, we're going to be teaching this time, and it's going to be a a massive undertaking to make sure on our teachers, and not only that, but our thumb, thumbnails to get them to and from, and you know. So there's going to be some remote and some virtual teaching at all time, right? No. Not all not well. Time. If I had a well, coat, if I if they shut school down, only if they shut school yeah. down. But I think it's one of our teachers have got to be trained, so, Joe. Yeah. We got to get them trained. And get our students a depth as mm -hmm. much as we can get on that Chromebook in case we do shut down pretty quick. So now now everybody has the answer. We're starting on time. Yes. So we can go forward on and work the both. And and I think some schools are ready to release some of their stuff yeah. after we have the answer. Well basically got it tonight. Well there was, there was no vote tonight, but there was, but I mean, no yeah. opinion. Special we're not said to all the, 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 the opinion though, Mr. White Pierce, we're not gonna change. Yes. Yes, hey, and, and I know you guys are probably getting hammered with this question, and it's something you need to know. You know, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I think it's kind of silly, but it's, you know, I tell them sitting here, the TWSAA, they're telling us we got all these mandates to do, but they're telling us, I don't want you to think this is on us making this decision or those two guys sitting right back there, but they're telling us it's legal and that for them to have volleyball practice, play other teams, and start a schedule. When's your schedule starting? About a week? Two weeks. I, I don't know how that adds up, but that's that's it. that cross country and golf. All three of them they're allowing to go. So if you see them out there, we're not violating. That's what they're telling us tonight to put our kids behind. You know, I don't, I don't know if it's right for us to stop that one. And already, how many how many sports have you had shut down already, Shane? Yeah, I know you've had two volleyball, girl basketball. How many times have you been shut down, Dusty? He said had four, four of his major sports shut down. Because one kid tests in the weight room, you're shut down. So I don't know how you're going to have it. I don't personally, and I've coached my wife, I don't know how you're going to have a season when you have a girl contracts COVID and then you, you, you're just going to forfeit games. I mean, I don't know, but I don't understand it either. But contracts in football that's got to Tricia just gave me an update. As of right now, you've got nine students signed up virtual. And when is the deadline again? Next so, Friday. Next Friday. Okay, next whole Friday. other week. Next Friday. And the teachers has got to go and August, uh, July 31st is their first day back. For like, what, four hours a day? Oh, the, the first day for students and staff yes. is August the 5th. Yes. Have a day. And, and pre-K will start too on time. Yes. And then you'll send out the guidelines for that too yes. on the website. After we know what y'all... Right. Pre-K We're going to start. We're going to start, but well, we'll use our they may, they, she may spread them out a little more than what she typically did. Because they get them, because they're the most... 
not susceptible, but it's going to take obviously long to train them. They've never been in the school building and teaching, you know, so we may spread it out a little more than normal as far as the numbers. Yeah. Can I ask a question? I have a question uh, for uh, Mr. Winkler, Mr. Beller. One, when is the earliest that we could have a special call uh, meeting and still get adequate notice? I think your notice just has to be reasonable. So we traditionally look a week, but if it was an emergency situation, as long as you made every effort, it could be less than that. Okay. You just have to have reasonable notice to get out there, but a week certainly would suffice. Scott, did you have it? Uh, I did. Uh, I was saying my voice, you saw about so lost right now. In, in light of that, then I would make, if it's appropriate, I'd make a motion that we have a special call board meeting next Tuesday night uh, to, to make a decision. Um, make a decision on? On what we're going to, what schedule we're going to follow. I mean, unless somebody changes their mind, it... Well, that's, that's, I, I get that, but I mean, we can't, that's a predicament that we're in. So... Well, we'd have to have a meeting to talk about changing the date and change the date. Then I, can't hear, I can't hear Tom. Well, if, if we have a meeting Tuesday night and then we decide that we're going to change the date and we voted to change delaying for two weeks, then we have to offer all the school calendar, then we have to go back toward the state. What what you would do is this board, if it amended the calendar, would amend the start date, and it all works from that. It would then go back to the calendar committee to meet the 180 day requirement with the start date you set. But we have sports activities that's probably going to start here pretty fast also, so therefore, would they start or would they have to be delayed? You can't delay anything by still like scheduling. I mean, they didn't get their schedule. You know what I mean? We didn't decide well, they're going to apply here. The issue that I see is I feel like that we owe our communities an opportunity to be heard based on the discussion that we've had tonight, based on the information that Dr. Duke has shared. Nobody may change their vote. I don't know. But I feel like that making a decision without going back to the people that the families that we represent and this affects matters and I feel like that we need to hear from our own districts uh, because I, I think that's important I think that's our job that's what we do that we represent these folks and I feel like everybody needs an opportunity to go back because you may personally feel that way but you're the people that you represent may not and I think you need an opportunity to be able to speak to them. Maybe nobody else feels that way. And if, you know, if I can't get a second on the motion, that's okay. But uh, that's just my thought. I don't, we can't make a motion if we don't have. She can make a motion. She can make a motion. You just got she, to call for a second. She can make a motion to, even though there's no yeah. new business. Okay. Just call for a second. Do we have a second? Do we have a second to Miss Moore's call of a, Meeting on Tuesday night. I'll save it. Mr. Taylor? I mean, do you vote on that? Yep, discussion and then vote. All right. Any discussion? If not, we'll roll call, Mr. Manning. No. Hold on. This is going to take a second because I don't have this Manning. No. Okay. Uh, I've got to get my list of people to go through. Sure. Mr. Shoulders? He said no. No. He's muted, but I think he said no. Mr. McCaleb? Mr. McCaleb? Can you hear me yes. now? He did say no. Okay. Mr. McCaleb was a yes. Ms. Moore? Yes. yes. Mr. Lewis? No. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Apple? No. No.
Five no's. Five no's is what I have. Five no's and three yeses. That's what I have to. Okay. okay. So, yeah. No meeting on Tuesday. So as of right now, we proceed on with the August 5th starting date. So if, if that's not going to change, we're going to start getting a lot of information. I'd like to just vote. Okay. We actually didn't vote on that, but we thought, yeah. I mean, what you did. Yeah. We, we, can, we, we can't see the two-week future or something drastic. Yeah, I mean, that can change. We may tomorrow. be in here next Tuesday. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, we, we may still be in here anyway. But as of right now, today, we start on time. Two options. All right. Let's move on. Anybody have any uh, discussion on the annual policy review for June? If not, uh, we do have a need for executive session. We have a motion for executive session. So moved. Mr. Lewis, do we have a second? Second. Who's it, Mr. Apple? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed?